Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna A. back again with another 10 video ads video. Uh, I had recorded a video yesterday and it was in the process of uploading when I heard a noise outside the front door. I went to the front door and opened it and there were three large packages. One contained a laser disc that I had purchased from someone in Hong Kong. It's actually a Japanese release but the seller was in Hong Kong and I'm trying to decide whether I should uh, show it or not because it's a naughty naughty disc so uh, I'm trying to decide if, if I should show it and if I do decide to show it how to show it the back of the jacket is going to be impossible to show but the front I think I can, can figure out a way how to do that but anyway there's that, and then I had another package that was full of laser discs that I had ordered from a online seller at the uh, Laserdisc database. I had purchased a laser disc from her in the past, and uh, this was my second order from her. She does an excellent job at grading uh, the quality of the discs and the jackets, and she does a good job packaging. So. I'm um, going be ordering from her again. And I received another uh, package from AJ Video Recyclery, uh, which contained CD video discs and laser discs. So I'll be doing another one of these videos later in the week, most probably, because I also still have another I don't know, five, somewhere between five and ten VHS tapes that I have yet to show and 15 to 20 DVDs. So, a lot to do, so let's get started. Now this first tape, when I saw it, I about had a heart attack. The uh, stall at the flea market that I buy all of my VHS tapes from, or uh, at least recently, their pricing structure used to be a dollar for each uh, VHS tape except horror which was two and Hong Kong action films which were two dollars and sealed tapes which were two dollars and the larger Disney style cases which were three dollars but they have since then lowered the price to a dollar for everything except sealed tapes which are still two dollars and the Disney tapes which they've lowered from three dollars to two dollars when I saw this tape I immediately uh, thought that hey, this is one of the tapes I used to have that was stolen. Well, not necessarily the specific copy, but one in the series of seven. Disney had come out with a limited edition series of tapes. It had seven tapes in it, and they were expensive. I bought all seven. I had to special order them, and I wound up paying somewhere around three hundred fifty to four hundred dollars for those seven tapes as I said limited edition but this is from a different limited edition set although it looks very similar on the outside until you look at it more closely anyway I'm glad to finally be finding these because uh, my original seven tapes were stolen at the time I was helping to supply a mom-and-pop video rental store uh, with tapes. I had a humongous collection even at that point and uh, I decided well I might as well start making some money off my collection and so he agreed to take my tapes and he would give me a percentage of whatever rental they made. He would get the rest because he had all the overhead. But mysteriously those seven tapes he said were stolen and uh, there were a few others that were stolen as well, he said. I say this because they were all expensive. Anyway, um, this is from Walt Disney Home Video. It is part of the Limited Gold Edition 2 series. I have the original series which came out in 84 I think this came out in 85 but still limited edition so I was really uh, excited to see this for only two dollars runs 47 minutes and each one of the original uh, 
limited edition tapes had uh, as part of the tape a section devoted to the beginnings of Disney and Disney's life story and uh, focus on the animators and so forth. So I'm, I'm curious to see if this has something like that also. I've been buying uh, some of the original uh, limited edition gold tapes, or not tapes, but CEDs, because that series was also released on limited edition CEDs in black caddies, which are extremely rare. Anyway, I'm, uh, yeah, but I'm a babbling and I'm not uh, really getting anywhere, so onward. The Amityville Horror. This was near the end of American International Pictures' existence. It was released by them. It uh, was low budget film, which was the case for them, but it made a lot of money, so they decided to get into making more expensive films, like Meteor, which they sucked a lot of money into and it bombed. Orion wound up with the American International Library. And in small print here, it says, um, copyright 1979, Orion Pictures, successor to American International Pictures Incorporated, and American International Pictures release. I wasn't aware they were the successor, just the acquirer of American International Pictures Library. Anyway, since then, Orion's gone out of business, and I believe their library is currently owned by Warner Home Video. Cataclysm. This is obviously a rental copy as it has a sticker on it that says um, tampering with this label requires you to purchase this item for $99.95. Anyway, this was released in two versions on VHS, one an R-rated version and one an unrated version, and this is the unrated version. I have yet to watch it, but I have checked all these tapes to make sure that they play satisfactorily. Now we have an adaptation of a Stephen King novel, Dreamcatcher. Obviously not a rental tape because there were no stickers on it. Okay, this has um, a misleading image on it. You might not think this is uh, a horror film from the cover. But if you look at the text, it's a different story. It could be a horror film, it could be a thriller, it could be a thriller horror film, or a horror thriller. Also not a rental copy. No stickers. Again, I always do the thing where at, when I'm at the flea market, I let the tape guard and I inspect the tape for creases and edge damage and it's amazing how many I actually do catch that are bad. So I take quite a bit of time going through their tapes before I settle on ones that are both tapes I want and in satisfactory condition. This is Hush, which some of you out there no doubt they think when I'm babbling. Hush. No stickers. Okay, this film has an alternate title. It was also released under the name Haunted House, which I think is rather bland and boring and generic. This is under the title Colobos, which I think has more character to it, the name, I mean.
This could probably be found on DVD because it was released by York Entertainment and they have put out a lot of budget DVDs. But sometimes you never know. You can sometimes come across a uh, movie that was never released in any other format. Anyway, this is from Sterling. Letters from a Killer. With Patrick Swayze on the cast. This is unusual for a Sterling release in that usually if you set the tape like this, the text is going to be facing this way. So all the other tapes, when I have them set this way in my storage shelves, the lettering is like that, as it should be. But with most of the Sterling tapes I have, or all the other Sterling tapes, it would look like that. So I have to flip them around so they're facing in the opposite direction to get the text right. And it's one of those little pet peeves that I have, but fortunately, not when they did differently. Okay, this is billed on the back as a futuristic erotic thriller. And it was released by Academy Entertainment. So I'm wondering if it was ever released on Laserdisc because Image Entertainment did release several uh, films uh, licensed from Academy. This is called Liquid Dreams. Fifty cent charge if tape isn't rewound, obviously. A rental. And by the way, when I am when I get them home and I play them to check them to make sure I'm not, that they're all okay, they're never rewound. Almost never. They're usually a third into the tape or half into the tape or three fourths into the tape. But I, I take them and bring them well, after I've bought them. I bring them home and I check them, play them for a couple of minutes, and then fast forward and then rewind. And um, then I have a nice even pack so that the tape can't be damaged or is less likely to be damaged. This is part of a series of films that were very popular in the late 40s and early 50s. Back when I was going to university, not in the 40s or 50s, in the late 70s, the student union would book in series films. That is, they would book all of the Blondie films and you could get it for a dollar and see them. They would book all of the Tarzan films and you can get in and see them all for one dollar. They did it with the Planet of the Apes series, they did it with the Old God series, they did it with uh, several series. And Mom and Pa Kettle was one of them. This is Mom and Pa Kettle on vacation. The characters were originally uh, side characters in the novel The Egg and I, which was later made into a film, and these same actors that play Mom and Pa Kettle in the film series played them in the adaptation for the egg and i and their characters proved to be so popular that they got their own film series okay I should be doing another one of these videos in a few days. Until next time, stay awesome.